Welcome yet again to another episode of Lunch Guide. My name is Chef Andy and today we are going to be making a very, very beautiful Mexican dish, actually one of my favorites. We're going to be making a beef enchilada. So without further ado, I'll introduce my ingredients. From the front, I've got some nice, beautiful tortillas there, some green chili, some salt, some cumin powder, some taco seasoning and some cayenne pepper. I've also got some lean beef mince there. I've got some enchilada sauce there. I've got some grated cheddar cheese and some lettuce. And last but not least, some beautiful canned sweet corn. So without further ado, I will give you this chance now to go and grab your pieces of pen and paper if you're going to be taking notes with us today. And when we come back, we're going to go straight into the dish. See you in a short while. Ladies and gentlemen, we took a short commercial break and now we are ready to go right into our dish today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be cooking this mince down. Remember this we're going to be using as a filling for the enchiladas. So I'm only gonna just add a bit of olive oil to the pan there, about two and a half tablespoons. We're just gonna give that a bit of time to heat. And uh, probably if I can give you a bit of a history to the dish, this is a dish with a Mexican origin. Very, very much a simple dish that most Mexicans would have as a snack in between the day or as a lunch on its own. It is actually now grown to be a street uh, dish right now. So as, as much as we would want to call it an original dish, this is something that has occasionally changed and is now becoming more commercialized. And you'll probably find this on Mexican streets being sold as street food. So I'm just going to show you how this is done. So to a hot pan I'm going to add some mince. And we're just going to use our wooden spoon to break that down a little bit. Right. So I'll just give you a history of the, I'll give you a description of the enchilada sauce that we've been using. So this is something that we made earlier, so this is now ready to use. So the main ingredients that went into this was a bit of tomatoes, a bit of garlic, a bit of ginger. There's a bit of some taco spice in there. There's a bit of some fresh chopped chilies, some salt and pepper, and we just cooked it down and it's as beautiful as it is. So the, origin, the color itself, this is basically from the tinned tomatoes that we were using. So this was not used with fresh tomatoes, we used canned puree tomatoes instead. Right, so I'm going to give that a nice quick fry there. So the mince, this should, this should actually be cooking in your pan for about four to five minutes. And I'm frying that at high heat. Right, so once you have that bit of color on your meat, you're just going to turn the heat a little lower. And all you're going to do now is bring in your dry ingredients. So as I mentioned, we had some cayenne pepper. I have some taco seasoning. And last but not least, some cumin powder. And just about two pinches of salt. So basically we're just going to fry this till it's done, we're not going to be adding anything into the pan yet. So as I always insist, try to get the best leanest mince you can find in the market. Remember it's actually recommended that you try and use lean mince, remember it's got less fat on it and it's actually healthier for you. And if you do have the option to buy mince that can be minced for you while you wait, as opposed to buying mince that was already pre-packed, I always insist it's actually the best way to get mince for this particular dish. 
I'm just going to use my spoon and I'm just going to keep breaking up the mince. Remember you want it to cook through really, really well. Right, so while that cooks, it's going to clean up this area. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a very simple dish. This is something you can make in a span of a very short time. You can actually be able to cook the mince to order. Or you can actually make the fillings and just reheat them in the oven or in your microwave and just serve them because it's actually a dish that you actually just assemble before serving. And as well for the tortillas that we're using, we're using these small size bits because this is actually just for demo, but you do get them in a bigger size. You do get them in about six inches to eight inches in size. So they do get bigger. You can be able to get the recipe for this online or you can actually just buy them ready. I'm sure you, most of you have probably seen them in supermarket shelves. They're actually labeled as tortillas. So all you do if you get the pre-done ones, just give them a bit of time to defrost, allow them to reheat in the oven a little bit and then just bring them out and assemble them as I will just now. All right, so our mince is just about done. So we're just gonna give that a few seconds to cool off and we're gonna come back and assemble it. We're gonna take a short commercial break now and when we come back, I'll show you how to complete this dish. See you in a little while. and gentlemen we took a short commercial break and now I'm about to show you how to assemble your enchiladas so very very simple technique uh, as I mentioned earlier I've got some tortilla chips there some beautiful sweet corn some cheddar cheese some enchilada sauce and some minced uh, ground beef so I'm just going to show you on this beautiful tray how this is done so I like to set it off on a big tray because it makes it a little easier to work on as well so all I do is arrange my tortillas side by side like that. It becomes a little easier if you grease your tray. That might actually allow you to get them to hold a little better. So I greased my tray with a little bit of butter and that should actually be able to just allow you to get them to sit up like I've done with these. So I'm just going to go into the assembling process so that you see how it's done. So all I do is add just a bit of mince to each one, like so, and I just continue going. Remember, it's not about being too precise. Remember, you're, you are going to bake this in the oven, so it is going to be a messy dish in, in any case. So I recommend when you're doing this, please don't kill yourself trying to get them to look perfect and match. It might not come out as it went in, right? Right, so last but not least, just a bit of mince of the last one there. So to that, very, very simple. I'm going to grab my enchilada sauce and I'm just going to work with a teaspoon. Kind of allows me to work a little faster. So it's just a teaspoon right through. Remember for, the, for a bigger tortilla, you'll probably be giving more sauce and more filling. So these are bite size, so I'm only just going to go a teaspoon on each. Right, so simple as that. And all I do now is go right on top with the cheddar. Right across like that. Very, very easy technique. And then a bit of the corn. And as I mentioned, please don't be too mindful about being too precautious with setting this up. It is good, like I said, it is going to come out as a messy dish and that's actually the fun of it. It's not about getting it too precise, but it's more of getting the flavors really in there. So easy as that, and I'm just going to give it just a little bit more of that cheese. So this should be going into the oven. You're only gonna be using your top element, and remember, 
this is something that cooks really quick. Remember the tortillas are already pre-cooked, the meat is already pre-cooked, so we're only just melting the cheese. So this will be going into our hot oven and when this, while we do that, I'm going to also show you something that we did a little earlier. So I'm going to pull that out first. We're just gonna sit that on the side and then we're just going to throw this next tray in there. Remember, as I mentioned, I'm only using the element. So remember, this is a dish that has, it's pretty much about 80% done. You're only giving it a bit of cake in the oven. So that goes in the top element for about 10 minutes, just until your cheese is melted and it's good to come out. So in the meantime, I'm just going to show you how to get this onto your plate. Right, so as I mentioned, it's very much just like assembling your own sandwich, but it's just done with a bit of a twist. And now we're just going to finish this off on our beautiful plate there. So I always give a, just a little bit of lettuce on the side there. Maybe just a nice piece of chili on the side. And all we're going to do is, so basically you're looking for both edges of the tortilla chip. And that's exactly where you want to lift it from. It might be a little tricky when it's all melted together like this. So please take your time not to break everything up. Right. And if it does seem to stick, this is also another technique to get it out. I normally just push my tongs right through to the end there. And all I do is use my other hand just to try and release those from the parchment paper. So remember, I'm using parchment paper because I don't want them to be very, very tough on the bottom. So the parchment paper kind of, kind of allows it to not really crisp and right to the bottom edges. All right, and it's easy as that. So we're just going to take those off the pan there. Like I mentioned, it's a bit of a messy dish, but don't mind it. I'm just going to do the same with the rest here. I'm just going to set those on the plate like that. Now we're going to take our last piece there. And that can go straight in the center. So as I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very simple dish, something you can now be able to make for yourselves at home. I normally just add just a bit of corn around there, maybe just a little bit of cheese on the side. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is ready to serve. So as I mentioned earlier, very, very simple dish, something you can be able to make in a very short span of time, something light, clean, and simple. If you are thinking of carrying this for lunch, you could actually carry them as they are and reheat them, or you can actually just carry everything separately and just assemble it for yourself. If you do not own an oven and you don't have any technique, anything that can help you melt the cheese, I recommend just throw the cheese on, but do it while the sauce is still hot so that it actually melts into the dish. So it's been a pleasure showing you how to make a beef uh, enchilada today. I hope you have learned a lot and I've actually enjoyed doing the same. Uh, until, the next, uh, until the next episode, it's uh, goodbye from me, Chef Andy. You've been tuned in to Brand Plus TV and you've been watching Lunch Guide. I do also recommend follow our Facebook page, leave your comments, leave your inquiries, and our directors and our team will actually be loved, will enjoy getting back to you. So from me at the studios, have a lovely day.